Hello, this is Bill Harvell, fellow dying inmate in the mental asylum that is our world. We pray that this presentation helps mature and deepen our journey in the faith. Uh, the multiplication of loaves and John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And the multitude followed him, because they saw the signs he did on those who were sick. <coughs> Jesus went up on the mountain, and there sat down with his disciples. Now, the Passover... The feast of the Judeans was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, How are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he eucharistesas, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the tas klasmata left over, but nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the dominant society Israel. Perceiving then that they were about to come to and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This story is found in all of the canonical Gospels, ladies and gentlemen. Mark chapter 6, verse 32 to 44. Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21. And another wondrous feeding of a different number of people in chapter 15, verse 32 to 38. Luke chapter 9, verses 10 to 17. And John chapter 6, verses 16 to 21. Again, according to Vatican II's Dogmatic Constitution on Divine Revelation, or Dei Verbum, section 19, the Pontifical Biblical Commission's Instruction on the Historical Truth of the Gospels, section 6 through 9, and the Universal Catechism, number 126. The Gospels, which are our primary source for learning about Jesus, can only be interpreted developmentally as documents which evolved. Now, Interpreted correctly is a redundancy, right? Because if you interpret, you are doing it correctly. What's the opposite of interpret? Misinterpret. Misinterpret. So interpret correctly, 
It's a bit of a redundancy. Interpret. You can only interpret them, i.e. interpret them correctly, if you do so developmentally, according to the three stages. The Gospels themselves emerge through a three-stage process. Stage one, the original words and deeds of Jesus. So, did this event go back to stage one? Did he actually, in a wondrous way, multiply loaves and fish and feed a multitude? Yeah. Stage two, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, whatever happened in this event in stage one, it was reevaluated and reinterpreted in a way to bring out the lordship of Jesus. Stage three, after the deaths of the apostles, communities like the Johannine community, write this story down to address situations in their own Jesus group. So from Boston College, we date the Gospels thusly. Stage one, stage two, and stage three. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, it, it, it had to come from, Marco, a very early source. How alien is John, John, to Mark, Matthew, Luke, Q, and even, I'll even throw in Thomas. It's extremely alien to those other texts. Now, Thomas doesn't have it, and Q doesn't have it, because those texts don't have narratives. They're just sayings, Gospels. But Mark, Matthew, and Luke have it. So this is rather extraordinary. It's a story that also belongs in John. John has a literary history, ladies and gentlemen. It is not like a Western 21st century biography. Neither is Mark, Matthew, or Luke. John cannot even be called an ancient biography. It's something different. From the vantage of the Gospels as literary compositions, we can say that they have, ha they have three levels. And when we read them with more or less precision, what we are doing is we are peeling back the levels and looking at all three, right? The Gospels are texts which evolved. Inspiration, therefore, cannot mean dictation. If we believe in inspiration, we cannot, mean it, we cannot mean by it dictation, that God dictated them. And among Christians, big C Catholics ought to be very grateful to God that our teaching church does not insist on us believing that inspiration means God dictated. Hey, thanks for watching. Just continue the playlist for the next part of the study. If you have further questions, this is good. They will get addressed, so keep watching. If you found value, please subscribe, like, and share. As always, questions, comments, and criticisms are most welcome. God bless you.